much for prizes. <coughs> Hello, miss. Can I help you get your pet ready for the fair? No, thank you. I'm almost through now. <coughs> I was just trying to be helpful. Say, that's a mighty fine looking bow you have there. cleaned up. A perfect weight. Hmm, only 37 and a half inches. Wait a minute. He's a perfect 40. The blue ribbon for the best of class. Oh boy, I knew he could win. Come on, Squealy, let's get out of here.
Professor Schmaltz, the child psychologist? Well, it ain't Schmaltz the butcher. Yeah, so? Just leave everything to me, madam. I'll be right over. And, Professor, I just can't get Terry to mind me at all. Aha! I guarantee I will have that child acting like a little angel. Mm, mm, mm. What a mess! The first thing I will have to do is give you a bath. I ain't taking a bath for nobody. Hmm. To make a child do what you want him to do, you must participate with him. Hmm. Terry, how would you like to go swimming with me, hmm? Oh, boy! Swimming? The last one in is a rotten egg! <laughs> the Rio Grande, and I learned to ride, for I learned to stand. Golly, are you an honest-to-goodness, real-life cowboy? That's right, partner. I'm the greatest Indian fighter in the West. Really? Once, I was surrounded by a whole tribe of bloodthirsty, wild savages. And as they swooped down upon me, I started picking them off one by one. First to the right, then to the left. Bang, bang! Ach, du lieber! Indians, help, help! the book. The spirit of Christmas teaches a child that if he is good, he will be rewarded. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Santa Claus! Merry Christmas, Terry! Merry Christmas! You see, Santa brings you all these toys when you are a good boy. Oh, yeah? Well, I was good last year, and you never brought the bike I asked for. Yeah! Oh, uh, Terry? Yes, Mother dear? What is it? W would, would you go on an errand for me? Why, gladly, Mother dear. Anything else I can do, Mother dear? Why, Professor, how did you make such a miraculous change in Terry? Ha-ha! <laughs> I just used a little child psychology. That's all.
space age we are living in is a challenge to our science universities. And their students are graduating at a tremendous pace in order to supply the great demand for scientists. The electronic scientist has turned his skill towards improving our everyday living conditions. He has replaced the drudgery of housework with little buttons for every household chore. I'm sorry, honey, but I won't be able to get home for dinner. I'm working on a big deal. I understand, dear. Bye, my pet. Okay, fellas, it's my deal. Even the sportsman has benefited from scientific research. For the fishermen, a solid glass boat has been designed to spot those ever-elusive fish. The atomic scientist solves his problem by remote control. He is insulated behind a six-foot thick wall to protect himself from the deadly radioactive materials, and mechanical hands are employed to make each carefully planned move. Leisure time, created by labor-saving devices, has caused a boom in our automobile industry, and highways have to be built fast enough to accommodate the ever-increasing flow of traffic. These roads are also planned for cars of the most extreme design. The transportation scientist has anticipated the forgetful motorist's habit of running out of gas. Fill her up, buddy. Even a breakdown on the highway is no longer a problem. some trip is now broken up by viewing the very latest movies on the way. There are also side roads to keep the kiddies amused. of speeding is now taken care of without the driver losing any time from reaching his destination. Guilty or not guilty? But with all this motorized modernization, there is one old-fashioned road hazard that we still have to put up with.
a real good book. Why isn't he asleep having bad dreams? Good book! Bah! Hey, give me my book. You should be reading something bad. Gosh, and I was just coming to the exciting part, too. We don't want any goody-goody stuff around here. Golly. Now I'll never know what happens to Ulysses. Good night, Casper. Unpleasant dreams. Poor Ulysses. He's been trying to reach home for so many years and has had nothing but misfortune. Yippee! There's Ulysses! Yay, a ghost! Oh, this is worse than all the evils I've seen in my years of troublesome travels. I won't harm you. I'm Casper, the friendly ghost. Oh, we could certainly use a friend. Good. What can I do to help you? We're lost and there isn't any wind. In that case, I'll see what I can do. Casper, where are you going? To the Cave of the Winds, Ulysses. Hello, Mr. Big Wind. Hi, Casper. What brings you here? My friend Ulysses needs your help to sail his boat. Gee, I'm sorry, Casper, but I'm leaving for a big blowout. Golly, can't you spare even a small breeze, please? Here, take this bag. It has enough wind for what you need. Thanks, Mr. Big Wind. I've got some wind for you, Ulysses. I hope it's enough to blow us home. We're on our way again. Well, I guess your troubles are over now, Ulysses. Yates, a fire-breathing monster. Uh-oh, more bad luck. Maybe I can make friends with him. Be careful, Casper. Uh, hello. I'm Casper, the friendly ghost. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm like no friendly dragon, see? I'll have to cool him off before he burns everything to a crisp. I'll try bumping these rain clouds together. <laughs> Looks like that took the fire out of you, Mr. Dragon. Ah, oh, I feel like real cool, man. Real cool and, like, uh, friendly, too. Come on, Ulysses. Let's get going again. We can't. While you were gone, that dragon burnt up our sail. I guess we'll have to abandon the ship. Wait, Ulysses. Don't give up. I'll have to stretch a bit. That's great, Casper. If this wind holds up, it won't be long now. There's a tropical island up ahead. Maybe we can get something to eat here. There's no sign of life, but something smells real good. Come on, let's see what's cooking. Uh, uh, looks like someone is throwing a big feast. Funny, there's nobody home. <laughs> Who cares? Let's eat. I hope whoever lives here doesn't mind. Oh, that big meal has made me sleepy. Gosh, sounds like a whole army coming. Who are you and what are you doing in my cave? I'm Casper, the friendly ghost. A ghost, huh? Looks like you spirited away my supper. My friends were so hungry, they ate it all up. Just for that, I'll make you my permanent guest. <laughs> Ulysses, wake up. We're in trouble. Uh, 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 what's wrong, Casper? We're being held prisoner by this awful giant. Yipes! It's Cyclops, the ferocious one-eyed giant. Gulp. <laughs> Stop! You let go of my friend. Oh, so you want to be first. Okay. You have to catch me first. <laughs> <laughs> You're trapped. You can't get out of here. That's what you think. I'll get you yet. Wait till I move this stone away. Good. That'll give Ulysses a chance to escape. So he thinks I didn't see him hide in that hollow tree. I'll just squeeze him out. <coughs> yummy, yummy. Whatever this stuff is, it sure is good. You mean you never had sweets before, Mr. Cyclops? Sweets? What's that? What you're eating is called maple syrup. Just one of the many sweets around. You know, if it weren't for you, Casper, I'd never have known about this wonderful sweet stuff. How can I ever thank you? If you really want to thank me, you can help Ulysses reach home again. Why, sure. Goodbye, Mr. Cyclops. 
And thanks for making the sale and getting us off to a flying start. With this stiff breeze, we'll soon be home. Yes, according to your map, we're going in the right direction. Oh, that scare raid was a complete fizzle. You know, fellas, Ulysses did reach home safely. How would you know? We tore up the book. Well, I can dream, can't I?